What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Atari, many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, which helps service professionals, doctors, lawyers, accountants, coaches, consultants, anyone who's you know, doing one-on-one client work, stop just trading time for dollars and shift from one-to-one client work to one-to-many. Um, it was founded by my business partner and myself, John Corcoran. We bring together like-minded entrepreneurs from different client-serving backgrounds. You can go to rise25.com, check it out. Dave, what people like is there's a dream product ladder. People can download it, and it basically helps you plan out your business on one sheet of paper. So there's different levels um, of untapped revenue in our business, maybe even over stockart.com um, at different levels you know they can come in at the smaller amount by smaller or they buy a group of of paintings for a larger amount so there's missing um, pieces for people a lot of times in their business um, but i'm excited today i have david sasan who founded overstockart.com and artistb.com since founding overstockart.com in 2002 david's grown the company from its modest start which we will talk about to an international organization with offices located in two countries they sell what's interesting it's hand painted reproductions of famous paintings and originally when i went to it i'm like oh this is these are prints but no these are hand painted reproductions they've sold millions of oil paintings from its inception uh david thanks for joining me thank you very much jeremy i'm excited to be here what's been a low or challenging moment and then on the flip side what's been a proud moment what's been a, yeah a low or challenging moment that you had to push through yeah, there, there's a couple of them. Uh, first one came in 2009. I, I mean, there's there were others along the way, but this is just a really significant one. Um, and in 2009, you know, economy was very rough. Um, we finished 2008 with about a 30% growth or so, um, but most of it came early. The, the fourth quarter was flat. Um, which 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 is difficult for a company like ours that was used to 30% growth or so. Um, and then 2009 started flat and then was going the wrong direction. Um, by June, we were down year over year for the very first time. And June was a horrible month. Um, and we lost money. Um, and we did not have a lot of debts to be able to handle much losses. So it was, it was very tight. And um, I remember talking with my brother in July and saying, you know, we need to do something different. We can uh, go raise capital maybe, um, but, you know, we're just going to dig a deeper hole. What, what, are, what can we do to, to do things differently? And but we had this meeting and decided to just kind of double down, increase our marketing, uh, increase our discounts. Uh, be more aggressive uh, with our offers and the number of communications that we have with our customers. And, and, and I'm going to back up just a little bit because uh, I neglected to mention the detail. In 2008, in about the summer of 2008, um, a person that we were working with a lot at the time told me, listen, let's cut our prices down to the very lowest price we can. And I told him why. He said, well, the economic thing is coming and it's going to hit and it's going to hit hard and you got, you just need to have a cheap price. And so I told him, well, let me think about it before we make any kind of a move. Let's, let, let me just think about it for a little bit. So a couple of days go by and I was reading a book by uh, Dan Ariely. It's called Predictably Irrational. It's one Irrational. of my favorites. Yep. All right. I listen Very to it stuff. every year. Predictably Irrational. Yeah. He's also Israeli, I believe, right? He is. He yeah. is. He is. He is. Fantastic. And so book. As, yeah. 
I'm sorry, say it again. Fantastic book. Yeah, a fantastic author. A very, very bright man. And the one thing that became obvious to me through reading the book is that one of the ways customers judge our quality is our price. And so what happens is if we cut our price, something that was $100, now is offered at 50 Susie Homemaker or what have you say, well, listen, this is the bad one, the cheap one. I want the good one. I'll pay more. So I told him, instead of lowering our price, why don't we raise it? And so he's looking at me and is like, are you crazy? And I told him, well, this is what we'll do. We'll raise the price, but we'll give them a bigger discount. That way, not only is the quality great, the price is high, quality is great, they're getting a deal today. Right. And that saved our fourth quarter, I think, but it also allowed us in 2009 to say, let's go more aggressive. Yeah. And so we did, and we turned the corner in the middle of July. July was still a bad month, but, it, but the second half was a lot better than the first. But what happened the rest of the year was amazing. We our sales just skyrocketed. We mm -hmm. we we had 50, 60 percent growth, very profitable, in the second half of 2009. <coughs> Excuse me. We ended up at about 30 percent growth um, year over year because of the earlier months that were that were not profitable, no growth at all, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but that and, and that really helped us. We moved to a larger place. Um, I moved full time to the company. I sold my share in the other company. I actually decided to sell my share in the other company in the midst of the recession before we turned the corner. I decided that I have to focus in one. I cannot do both anymore. And so that was a really it was a difficult decision That's because a hard you're decision. putting. You know, your livelihood is at risk, and, and I have a family and all that. But I just felt like it's the right thing to do. Uh, I talked to a few advisors, a few people that, that I respect, and I just said, well, what, what do you think? And, you know, burn the boats is one of the things that I kind of heard from a few people, and so you kind of got to decide, and, and, and I felt that was the right thing to do. And... That that was that was a low moment that that we really kind of turned the corner on. Yeah. Um, the other one was in 2013, and I alluded to it earlier. Um, in 2013, we were very very low on inventory because 2012 was so strong, um, and then we had uh, a copyrights claim that took about half of the remaining inventory off of our site. Wow. And so we were down to almost nothing in stock. Um, we were losing money. Our sales were going the wrong direction. Our profit was going the wrong direction. And the few errors that we've had, we did not have good bookkeeping at the time, so we did not know how much we're losing until much later. Um, for example, in February of 2013, I looked at our financials and I saw a profit of $20,000 and I'm saying, you know, it's not what I wanted, but okay, it's, 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 a, it's a black number, right? It's positive. Right. Well, I look a couple of months later, it's a loss of $20,000. Mm. That, that's a $40,000 swing. Yeah. So, so we were in a, we were in a bad shape. Um, and... Uh, I had to put more money into the company, and it was a difficult time for us on, on a number of different levels. Um, sometimes what people do when they're uh, hit with so much uh, stress and so much challenge is they react. They just, okay, let's uh, reduce prices, let's uh, increase marketing, let's do these big discounts, let's do something, let's get something done, let's call customers. You know, there is this reaction by entrepreneurs because we're conditioned to, for action, right? This is why we created a business, right? And so the initial reaction is let's get it done, let's do something. And so actually thanks to a strategic coach to, to a large degree, um, I, uh, I decided to take time and think about things and not just react. 
And so I would go away from the office for a whole day um, and spend time just different options for growth, diff different options to improve profitability, different options for this, just, just kick around ideas, mm -hmm. a lot of times by myself, sometimes with others, at least for part of the day, um, and come up with some solutions. For example, um, we were buying a lot of inventory because we had to replenish from 2012 and such, and so inventory takes cash. So how can you have the same availability with less inventory? So we came to, we came to our vendors and said, hey, listen, we want to work with you, but we need some payment terms. And, and also what we need is for you to hold some product in stock for us in your facility. And then we will pull it and we'll guarantee that we'll pull in 90 days. And this is an agreement that does not, it doesn't happen in our industry. Nobody does it. We're the only ones that have this relationship with our vendors. Um, and so it's things like that that we've done. Um, the, the supply chain algorithm came at that time. Uh, these are things that we've done because we didn't just react. We took time to think about what are the best courses of action. Um, the human condition is such that when you're under stress, it's almost like, your body's thinking there is a tiger at the other side of the room and you got to mm. react now. But in modern world, it's usually not a tiger. It's something that will happen in a month or two or three or even a week or two. You have time to think before you react. And doing that really, really saved us because who knows what we would have done, you know. Um, and we built so many solutions, we became a much, much better company, a much better run company, uh, and uh, positioned ourselves for growth so much better than what we had before. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, that sympathetic nervous system wants to kick in, and the fight or flight, you know, wants yeah. to, it's like an animal's attacking, but uh, it's not. Yeah. Um, exactly. And I remember that exact story in Predictably Irrational. I, I think I know what you're talking about. It's where the, they told the clerk to cut the prices in half, and by accident, they doubled the prices, right? Yeah. And they came yeah. back and sold the inventory, doubled the price. Yeah. yeah such a good story. Um, yeah. So on the flip side, thanks for sharing that, David. That's like um, you know entrepreneur therapy to hear that. So uh, because <laughs> I, I'm sure everyone can relate to that. Um, what about on the flip side and the, the proud moments? Um, you know, it, it's it's funny, but I think the proudest moments are when we just, and it's, it's going to sound uh, a little normal, but um, to me, a proud moment is to come in in the morning on Monday morning. I like Monday mornings and just see that we had a good weekend on our retail side. That's that's a great moment. It's just seeing the concept at work. Uh, I do a, a, a morning meeting with different people in the office. We do it all over the company, um, but I do it in the morning uh, with my production team and usually a customer service team. And just, just seeing everybody Monday morning excited for the week, that's a proud moment. Uh, they're, they're, these are simple things, but this is what makes the company go around, you know. Uh, we did, we like to do things for the company together, so we did a dinner, for example, just a couple of months ago. Uh, took everybody to a nice kind of a fancy restaurant here in town and just seeing the company together, seeing everybody have a good time, drink a couple of glasses of wine or beer or whatever. Those are proud moments. Those are great moments. They're they're, they're like proof of concept, if it makes sense. You know, you had this concept in your mind, you know, in, in, when you started the business. And the concept was never just you working from home packaging paintings. The, the concept was to grow the company and have people around. And so those are the moments when we're together and when we're talking about these things that um, are very proud for me and exciting. And so... It's simple. It's not. It's not fancy. It's not. Uh, Is a milestone it's though that you're especially proud of with the company? Um, you know, 
um, I, I think I think a milestone was when we turned things around in in 2014. After 2013 being so tough, 2014 being actually our back to being our best year ever. 2015 was better than that. Uh, 2016 was flat with 15 from a sales standpoint, but profitability was off the charts better. Um, so, so being able to to uh, take the ideas and the things that we've developed and actually implement them and actually see growth again after, after growth not being there, that was a kind of a momentous occasion for us. Um, another time was uh, was when we launched a completely new platform for our website. Um, hmm. What you were know, you on we, before and what are you on now? Uh, before we were on a Yahoo store platform. Mm -hmm. um, and in 2014, sorry, 2015 is when we launched it. We launched the new platform. It's an open cart platform. Mm. So we manage our own server. Um, it's That's our a own big technology. decision. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a big decision. Um, it's a lot of work. It's quite a bit of money too. Um, but it, uh, I tell you what was a big decision. So in okay, September of 2013, sorry, 2015, our site is say 90% ready, but it's been 90% ready for six months. Right. And we're like, okay, what do we do? We gotta launch it because if we don't launch it now, it's not till January. But but if we launch it, it's not fully ready. And we just sat down and kind of ran through positive, negative, and say, okay, let's go, let's do it, let's see what happens. And you know, sure enough, sales dropped at first. Hmm. That wasn't fun. <laughs> I'd be scared. I would be really scared, actually. It, it was even scary. if it was a hundred percent, even if you told me it was a hundred percent ready, I would still be scared because anytime you switch, something's going to go wrong. You know? Yeah. No, absolutely. So if you pull it over your head, your feet are exposed. If you put it on your feet, your head's exposed. That's kind of how it was. We would improve this, then this, and then it, was, it kept on going like this. We were at ninety percent, and we couldn't get past it. And the original designers that we had on it, they got it to about 90% and then we couldn't get them to work in at it anymore and you know it was it was it was a, it was a mess and we were fighting with it and uh, right or wrong by the way we decided to just do it. and we launched the site and we had a drop um, but we corrected it within a couple of months we had a decent holiday season um, not as great as we wanted it to be but it was decent for sure um, and it was a little higher than the year before. And we started seeing some growth in 2016, year over year, that was pretty nice. Yeah. And, and, and the new platform is, is miles ahead of the old platform. Um, there is a, the, the level of technology that we have and can, and can use is completely different. Um, the Yahoo Store technology, we had to build a lot of tools around around the cart, not within the cart. Um, and also the number of programmers, developers that we could use to develop on that platform was very limited. And so we were able to do so much more with with uh, with the new platform. Yeah. And that's, that was an exciting thing. Dude, first of all, I want to be the first one to thank you so much for taking the time. And um, I want to point people towards overstockart.com. Um, or artist B, that's artist B E dot com. Um, and just, you know, thank you for, for sharing the stories. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Right. My pleasure. I had a yeah. blast. Thanks, Jerry. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other.